So I joined the Air Force for a multitude of reasons, really. I joined because I have a tradition of serving in my family. Um, I have grandfathers that served, two great-grandfathers that were in World War II. My family comes from a tradition of public service. My dad's a paramedic. He's also a firefighter. All my cousins are firefighters. My uncles are firefighters. So serving the country and the public is something that I was brought up in. It wasn't something that was mandatory, but it was definitely something that was encouraged as something positive to do in your life and in the lives of others. And I didn't like school at first. I didn't like high school. I didn't wasn't a very good student and I didn't want to keep going to college. And so I decided that the military sounded good for me and then the Air Force sounded like my best option. So I've been for almost three years. I'll be hitting my three years in the next month. And I am a senior airman or E4. So my AFC is one Charlie six X one also known as Space Systems Operations. I got this job in depth. I got the job and I waited a year to leave for basic training because I still had to finish high school. So when I sat down with a recruiter and made my list, this was my number one job. I wanted to do space. I didn't know a lot about it. There's not a lot of info about it, but it sounded really cool. And then after that, I had several other jobs, but this was my absolute favorite. So the rest of my list looked pretty similar to the job I have now. It was all intelligence or cyber operations or more in technically focused jobs like that. So I believe I had like cyber security, cyber security, knowledge operations, operations intelligence, stuff like that. So I signed a four-year contract. I already had A1C coming in because I had the opportunity to do JROTC in high school. So there was a little motivation for me to sign a six, so I signed a four. My tech school was at Vandenberg Air Force Base in Lompoc or Santa Maria, California, depending on who you talk to. It's about two hours north of Los Angeles and about 45 minutes north of Santa Barbara. Tech school for me was four months, but the talk around the career field is they're going to be upping that to six months in the next year. I really enjoyed my time out of Van Berg. It was a really, really great opportunity. Central California is beautiful, and I was there at a really cool time of the year. I got to see Van Berg, if not a lot of people know this, but Van Berg is considered the Western Range. So it's one of the two areas in the United States that we launch major rocket systems. So I got to see several rockets go off while I was there. Just got to spend time on the beach, um, traveling down to Los Angeles, traveling to Santa Barbara, just really enjoying the Central California region. The school is challenging. Uh, it teaches you a lot of information that you never learned at school. It's very rewarding. And it was very interesting. I, it's something I've been into my entire life. I always loved space. I always had posters of astronauts everywhere and rockets and stuff, so getting a little bit of a taste of that world at 18 was a really, really cool opportunity. So there's several ways that the, our bases scale in my career field. So it starts out where you just basically have five options. You have Buckley Air Force Base in Denver, Colorado, Shriver Air Force Base in Colorado Springs, Colorado, Peterson Air Force Base in Colorado Springs, Colorado, Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, Patrick Air Force Base in Florida. After your first assignment, you have the option to do a couple of follow-on assignments, and those brought into Beale Air Force Base in Northern California, Cape Cod Air Force Base in Cape Cod, Thule Air Base, which is a remote one-year assignment in Northern Greenland, Clear Air Force Station, which is in Northern Alaska, and then several smaller joint assignments that are more difficult to get, but possible. But those are pretty much your major bases that you're going to be rotating between for most of a career in my career field. Space Systems Operations is really interesting because no two bases or units do the same mission. You could work at a radar in California or in Cape Cod or in Thule or in Clear, where you're basically watching for missiles to come over the horizon. You could work at GPS, which is running the GPS system. You could work for satellite communications. You could do other forms of missile warning. There's a lot of different things you could do, but while the missions change and the mission areas change, the primary way it works is you go into a secure facility, because all of our stuff is, is secret mostly, and you sit at your console and you do whatever your tasks are. So a lot of it's inside, all of it's inside really. It's looking at computer screens, manipulating data, analyzing data, lots of things. But it's just you at a console, looking at a screen, doing everything they've trained you to do. So it's inside for 8 to 12 hours a day for 
however many days in your rotation. Some units do four days, some units do five days, some you only come in for the weekdays, a lot of them you work on the holidays. It, it depends. Someone's always got to be doing it because these things don't just turn off at night. So it's a lot of shift work. It's a lot of sitting down, doing whatever they train you to do. So it's helped me is, is learn, 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 learn. I talk to engineers. I work, our career field works with a ton of engineers. These are civilians that have been doing this forever. They've got huge brains full of information to ask them questions, learn about the system, talk to people that have been around for a while, depend on them. They know their job better than you do. So listen, pay attention, write things down if you need to, ask questions, but just keep learning. There's so much rich information for you to discover and to become good at. Skills you can always be honing, but you're not going to get good at this kind of job unless you're learning, you're pursuing, you know, the information about your system that you work on, other systems, taking opportunities to do professional military education, not necessarily big Air Force stuff, but just big stuff about what you do, how space works. It's a very complex environment. It's a new environment. We're still learning about it, but trying to be on the cutting edge of that and trying to get yourself involved in any opportunity you can have to go out and learn and just keep learning, keep asking questions, keep seeking opportunities. And when you start out, all that stuff sounds really exciting. You should absolutely be doing it, but also just learning your job. Look to the guy next to you who's been doing this for a long time. Ask him questions. Do what he does. Learn how to do the job. Grow on that knowledge. Build that knowledge. Then grow and expand out and just learn. Just keep learning. It'll, it'll provide you so many opportunities if you're the guy who has the answers. It opens so many doors for you. And it makes you feel confident because when someone asks you a question, you can either know the answer and can give them the answer or you know the person to go talk to that has the answer. 